Hey guys, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Today I'm going to be looking at a battery from a company called LVGOO. Seem to be another new player on the, the lithium battery market for RVs. Uh, they offered to send me out their 130 amp hour battery for a test and a review, so I took them up on the offer, uh, mainly because it looked a lot different than a lot of other ones that I've reviewed. Kind of reminds me of the SOK that I reviewed a couple years ago, but uh, the construction of it looked like really good quality. It's a metal case and uh, it has very good uh, connectors here, handle on the top, 130 amp hours, and the internal stuff from a brochure I looked at looked really good too. So what I'm going to do is uh, first we'll do some charging and discharging tests and then we'll take it apart and have a look at the internals and see what they've put in there. It's uh, really easy to get apart, just screws on the top of the metal case here, unlike some of the, the other batteries that I've looked at, they were, you know, they're all glued together and all plasticky. This looks like a really robust construction on this one, so I'm kind of eager to get it apart and see what they've done in there. Anyway, let's get to it. So before we take it apart and look at how it's built inside and what components it contains, we'll do some charge and discharge tests just to make sure it can uh, do what the manual says as far as max charging and max discharging. So set up a little test bed here um, over at my friend's place uh, doing some camping in his driveway so I'm using his uh, workshop right now. Anyway, got a couple chargers here that I think I should be able to get the max charge. Max charge recommended charge level is 65 amps for this battery. So we're just going to turn on this charger. It gets me up to around 7 or so. 8, eight amps. Plug this in. And that should bring me up. There we go. 68 amps. So it looks like it can handle it. I'm just going to let it go until it's uh, completely full and then we can do some discharge tests through this inverter and into a power station I have. See if it uh, can handle its max discharge. It says max continuous discharge current 120 amps over current protection 150 amps. So it probably could run uh, most microwaves. Anyway I'll let this go just to give it a, a, a longer term test here with 68 amps charging. And I ran that for a good straight hour at just over 60 amps, 67 amps. Stayed pretty solid the whole time. Battery handled it really easily. I can't even feel any heat whatsoever on the case. One thing I did notice though on the side of the battery it said charge current max 50 amps but in the manual of the same model number it says 65 amps either way it's a little lower than uh, some batteries I've reviewed that uh, have a spec of a hundred amp max charge current anyway you probably wouldn't usually go above that most RV charge converters are around 50 60 amps or 50 or 60 amps is a lot of solar power. Anyway, let's try the discharge. We'll see if, if it can perform a, a max discharge test. It says 120 amps and cut off at 150 amps. Next, I'm going to do an extended discharge test. So we're drawing pretty close to 50 amps. Got a little heater running. Uh, the voltage on the battery terminals is 12.5. Just and I have the battery fully charged. I use my solar charge controller to charge it up and I set it for 14.6 volts for its charging voltage. That's what it said in the manual here. And we'll should let it we'll let it run. It should get pretty close by the discharge curve here. It should get pretty close to over 90% of its capacity before it gets so low that my uh, Inverter will cut out using a 3000 watt uh, Moto Master Pure Sine Wave inverter for this test. So we'll just let it go. I got a timer going. We'll see how long it lasts. Well, I'm back. 
two hours and 15 minutes later. Starting to drop. This is what's in the battery terminals. 12.25 volts. Still drawing pretty close to 50 amps there. Says uh, 49.2. So probably drawing pretty close to about 110 amp hours out of this 130 amp hour battery. So about 85% about 15% left capacity. That's usually when they start to roll off, when they get down around 10, 15%. A lot of times the voltage will drop if you're pulling a pretty good load. So, you know, you can lower the load. So let me turn it down a bit. Let's go to fan mode. Only drawn three amps and you can see the voltage pops back up. Anyway, seems to be able to draw a pretty good sustained load. I don't feel any heating basically at all at all on it. Max discharge test. So I have a power station here that I can vary its charge current and then I just have an additional heater there so that I can get up around 120, 150 amps and a pair of inverters. Same thing so that I can get the current up. Right now it's drawing 58 amps and voltage 12.86 on the terminals. Started out as 13.4 without any load. So now I'm just gonna turn up the charge speed on this. Throw it up to 700 watts. That should up the amperage quite a bit. Sorry, it's upside down. Anyway, we're up to 90, about 91 amps there. Voltage 12.57. And we'll continue on here. Try 900 watts of charging. Okay. 108 amps. There we go, about 118, 119, and the voltage on the terminals is 12.1. See what my voltage on my 11.7 11 on my inverter here. I'm just going to let that go for a good half hour. So it's pulling its max load and see if anything goes wrong. Well, I ran it for about a half hour at 118 amps output and it handled it no problem. It did get fairly warm right around here, just under these terminals and on the side. So I imagine that's where, where the battery management system board is going to be. Anyway, let's get to the fun part. The whole reason I really wanted to review this was it had a very uh, nice looking case. Kind of reminds me of the SOK batteries. It's all in a metal case. Nice handle. Everything looks really cool. Almost looks like something the military would have. Pretty good connectors here. It says in the manual they're good to 200 amps. They have nice long bolts on them so you can actually stack a few uh, lugs on there no problem. It is fairly heavy compared to a lot of them. It goes about 41 pounds, but it is 130 amp hour. Usually the the 100 amp hours are around 30 pounds or so. Some of them get down as low as about 23 pounds, like my line energy ones. So it is fairly heavy, but seems to be a, a good beefy build. And when the guy sent the brochures, it looked like really intriguing inside. Like everything comes apart very easily and you'll be able to maintain your own battery if anything goes wrong. So let's undo all these screws around the lid, pop it and see what's inside. Bunch of little screws gets the lid off. Right away it looks pretty nice. There's your four lithium battery packs. They're all held in a nice plastic case and a couple metal bands holds them in place. Closer look in there. See the BMS is over on the side here, mounted against the, the metal case, well away from the pack. 
Looks like some pretty nice connections and connecting bars in there. So I should be able to get it apart pretty easily and give you a closer look at the innards here. Wow, that's pretty nice. So had to take off the negative lead here and this temperature sensor was siliconed right there. Unplug the balance leads from the battery management system and it just slid out. Looks really nice. If you've even gone to the trouble of labeling everything, you can see B2, B4, B1, B3. It's like B0. Really nice. I like the bolts they use here. They've got a washer and a lock washer on them. Everything looks nice stainless. Pretty good looking bus bars. Nice. Let's see if I'll unscrew the BMS and get it out so we can have a look at it too. These leads are pretty nice. Six gauge, 200 Celsius heat rated. Here's a close look at the BMS. It says right on it 120 amp. And then at the end of this 4S, I think that means you can a series string these batteries up to four. I only see one temperature sensor here and it says 70 Celsius so to me that's probably only a high temperature sensor. I don't see any low temperature sensing at all. On the BMS I see a spot for uh, another temperature sensor right there but that's a shame if it doesn't have low temperature protection. Usually what they'll do is they'll have some sensors coming out of that and attached to, to points on the lithium cells so that they can't be charged below freezing. So I can see here over temperature protection they have some temperature specified but where it says under temperature perfection under temperature protection for charge and discharge it says invalid for emergency and necessity consideration. No clue what that means. <laughs> Anyway, I think I'm going to give them an email and see, confirm that this has no low temperature protection. So that's kind of a shame for such a nice battery. So I looked up the BMS board number and got this uh, diagram of it. And you can see there is something right here. It says NTC for to turn on heating film. So I think that's negative thermal coefficient. Um, sensor that you can put on there and it's a negative pole of heating film so this thing can have uh, battery heating pads installed but the BMS board in there wasn't really populated with any anything in there to do that there's just the external temperature sensor and uh, the balancing for the battery packs so I emailed uh, my contact at the company and this is what they said about it. I said, I've reviewed other lithium batteries that have a BMS with low temperature sensors. The BMS will disconnect charging below 0C, which is 32 Fahrenheit, and discharging below negative 20C, which is around negative 4 Fahrenheit. He said, yes, this is a common setup for most LifePo 4 batteries. I said, this is a good feature for RVs that live in cold climates. What he said was, we have batteries with the same setup, and we also can do the same setup on the LV12V130 batteries, which is this one. But some customers complain that low temperature setup is not convenient for them to deal with emergency or necessary situation. Because they have to warm the battery up to certain temperatures, then they would, would to be able to use them. This is usually difficult or impossible for them if they are in emergency or necessary situations. I said, I was told the reason for the disconnect is because the lithium cells can be damaged if they're charged below 0C or charged below negative 20C. He said, yes, but the word damage is not quite accurate. So I said, but you're saying it will only reduce the battery life so you can use it in cold weather if it's an emergency or a necessary condition. 
He said, yes, very limited uses out of the normal use temperature is not a big deal to damage the batteries. So there you go. That's that's the response I got. Um, so overall, I'll give you my pros and cons as I see them for this battery. 100 amp hours is really good for the size of it and everything. Excellent construction. I give them top marks for the, the build quality and everything there. Uh, has included the terminal isolators and really nice term terminals on it. Um, 120 amp discharge rate, max discharge rate, which is pretty good. You can connect up to four in series and also a sub 600 price tag for 130 amp hours of uh, capacity is not too bad. Cons, no low temperature protection, <clears throat> only a five year warranty. You know, some of the better brands have eight or 10 or a limited lifetime warranty. Uh, they're also a new company. I don't really see any history online about them. And looking through their website, it doesn't even seem fully completed yet. And also, it's got a comparatively low max charge rate at 65 amps compared to a lot of them that have 100 amps. Anyway, I'm going to continue to uh, to use the battery on my way back to BC boondocking. I use it as a backup to my main battery bank. So we'll see if any other things crop up, and I'll be sure to report them. Until next time, Ray from loveyrv.com. Cheers, everyone.